Welcome to another Saturday night and taking it to the nub. I'm your host, Boston Jimmy. And tonight, I have a guest on who I haven't had on this show since the beginning of the first season, season one. That's four years ago. So David Blanco from Blanco Cigars, we're going to bring him in in just a moment. But as always, let us pay a few bills and be and get this show rolling. Today's show is brought to you by Casa Cuevas Cigars. In the 19th century, Juan Cuevas, Spanish immigrant from Santanda, began what was to be a family business which now spans four generations. Like others fortunate enough to live and work in Pinar del Rio province of Cuba, Juan commenced cultivating tobacco, turning it into a successful business. Following in his father's footsteps, his son Juan Jr. continued with the family business, successfully expanding it until events which took place in 1959 forced a dramatic change. Years later, in the Ciabo Valley of the Dominican Republic, Luis Cuevas Sr., Juan Jr.'s son, carried on the family tradition of handcrafting fine cigars in the family's cigar factory, Tabacalera Las Lavas. Today, Lewis Sr. is joined by his son, Lewis Jr., in the manufacturing and sale of premium long filler cigars at their factory, Tabacalera Las Lavas, in Santiago, Dominican Republic. So check out Casa Cuevas Cigars at www. CasaCuevasCigars.com and on their Instagram and Facebook channels. All right, let's bring David in. What's up, brother? Did you watch the beginning of that? Did you watch those two advertisements at all? Are you able to see it? No, I wasn't able to see it. Yeah, one of the ones is always uh, comes in. We've got um, um, Casa Cuevas comes on. And the, and the history of the Casa Cuevas family is very similar to your hi- the history of your family from Cuba, 1959, the whole thing. All the stuff that happened. Very similar. Uh, great guys, the Cuevas family. Um, the father, of course. Well, the grandfather. I don't know, there's three generations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the old man, the Louis and uh, Luis and his son. So um, I, I don't hate. I can't call anybody old man because I'm I'm becoming an old man myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fair people, great gentlemen. Um, been down to the factory, down in the DR when I visited them. Just trying to work on some things with them. And uh, great hosts and, and very gracious people, gentlemen, all three of them. So nothing bad to say about them. Those guys are rock solid. Absolutely. And, and, and it's this whole compadre of, of uh, Cuban uh, immigrants over the years that have brought this craft not only to the United States, but around the world. Um, how you've been building and, and operating. I mean, your company alone has celebrated now 25 years since its founding here. And, and yeah, that, that's got to be a, that's a momentous thing. Now, I have not seen a 25th or quarter century cigar coming out of you. Not yet. It's coming. Um, it was, uh, it's a timing issue for me with regard to a bunch of different things. And I have some other side projects that I, for those of you who aren't familiar I work with other companies as well as I blend cigars for them, make cigars for other brands. Uh, so it was simply an issue of logistics and timing with, I have customers that I have deadlines that I have to meet and they have things that they want to be done. And so with COVID and everything got pushed and pushed, uh, packaging are still issues. Uh, box production is still issue. I'll be honest with everybody down there. If you haven't heard this, ladies and gentlemen, 
COVID is still affecting the industry with regard to workforce as well as, and I think this is more important and is a bigger factor now, the immigration policy that we have here in the United States with our open border to the South. Um, you got to remember a lot of our, not to talk too much politics, but it, as it relates to our industry, um, the countries that we work in, in Nicaragua, Honduras, Dominican Republic, uh, you know, these co countries that have cigar production um, are third world countries. And uh, as a result, Nicaragua in particular is the second poorest country in this hemisphere behind Haiti. When I found that out, I couldn't believe it. There's no reason it should be other than corruption. Um, and, and unfortunately, with the regime that's in place down there, that's what you get. And so the people are suffering. So when they have an opportunity, like they've been presented with right now, is basically, if you make it to the border, surrender to the, uh, you know, uh, CBP, Customs Border Patrol, you're in. That is what is going on. Um, so as a result, we have humongous losses in workforce and labor force in all of these countries. And it's not just those. Like if you watch the news at all, you'll find that they'll talk about the immigration down there. You got people coming from 88 different countries around the world. <clears throat> so it's, it's not limited to Central America, but it's severely hindering uh, some things down there and it's depleting the workforce. I never thought I would ever be talking about cigars on a cigar show or a podcast or anything having to do with we have a problem because of immigration policy. So, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this question. Sure. You know, I don't want to go down that 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 rabbit hole too much, but okay. I'll, I'll 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 bite the bait ever so slightly. Um, so, when it comes to compensating employees in the cigar industry, if you look at the different industries that are in Nicaragua, you got sugar or coffee. Um, so, uh, tobacco and other things, I'm sure, but those are the popular ones. Textile where do you put where do you put the cigar industry as far as compensation to employees and ability to want to continue to be there, working because they're getting something? So, relatively speaking, across the uh, industry, and there are different jobs in the industry, so it's a it's a very broad mm -hmm. broad uh, spectrum there. I mean, we have people in farms and we have people putting cigars in boxes and everywhere in between. So the expertise level and the uh, education level and the um, skilled labor factors also play into effect. So um, like any fabrication or uh, production facility, there are less skilled and there are medium skilled and there are more skilled. So they're paid based on the skill that they possess and how long they've been doing that if in fact it is a higher skill level position. The biggest problem that, and by the way, the industry as a whole, there's a, there's a sliding scale, but it is an industry that not only thrives, but continues to employ and grow uh, tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands of people throughout the Caribbean basin. So it's not like we are somehow lower on the scale than say the our, our agricultural, other agricultural industry products or the textile industry products or things like that. But I will tell you that is a sliding scale. So, for example, and this is where we have a lot of issues, um, box production, box factories, right? not the highest skill level positions in our industry. Cut, sand, paint, cut, sand, paint, cut. Sand. I refer to them as uh, uh, Santa's elves, because when you walk into a box that, factory. That's a funny way to put it, but that's about what it is. It's like walking into Santa's. Santa's shop and everybody's got a job. This guy does this, this guy puts this on and, and there's 25 or 30 stations in making a box and each person does their job. That's what they do. They put the and rivet the in, they put the clamp on. Yep. They do that. It reminds me of Santa's elves in, you know, assembling toys, right? Yeah. So th this is not high skill labor jobs. So these are the type of positions um, that, and their laborers that are immediately going to find a better life with the American dream, right? Will they? they? Less to stay for. Will they? That's the question. Will they? Because, because I'll even take the person that comes up here that is an agricultural worker in the fields, comes here to the United States and wants to, say, yeah. work in the fields, right? They, they're familiar with the fields. They want to work in the fields. They want to pick crops. Yeah, they're going to make a little more money picking crops than we're probably making down there. But the cost of living after you pick the crops may not be the same as what you're getting down there. So that was my question. Is there a, is there a reason for them to leave 
other than the propaganda being fed to them saying, you can do much better up there. Pay me a bunch of money to mule you up. Yeah. So, right? yes, the answer is the American wage will, they'll be able to, you can sustain yourself here. On a, listen, I've had to do it myself as a young man, uh, you know, eating ramen noodles and everything else. And we've all, most of us have probably been there at some point in our life. Um, you yes. can sustain your life up here. And still live and what they do, they'll they'll come together and they'll have four, five, six guys in a, in an apartment, right? So they'll profit share or profit share. They'll rent share a location. And then it's not only the, the money that they're making for a life of their own, but a lot of these guys are sending money back to the families that they are sustaining. Oh yeah. Oh of course. And that's what every immigrant has ever done. And I get it. So I mean it's there's a lot of reasons why they do it, but it's for a better life. I get yeah. that. But right now, we can't just say, come one, come all, the whole world, the doors open, and, you know, no but how do you? But how do you feel about that when you say that? I mean, I don't want to go, I didn't want to go too deep, but I, I, each word says, triggers another thought in my head. So okay. as, as a member of a family that I'm got pretty- exiled, that exiled that Cuba, right. so if how do you does- feel about, how do you feel about that when you look at another countries people that say hey you know what they know it's a shit show down there it's a communist socialist guy they don't want to be there you didn't want to be there your family didn't want to be in cuba after you got pushed out you want to you, you want to find a new way so how do you how do you rationalize all of that saying how, how does that in your head rationalize out one was given an opportunity and you want to close the door on the other right so don't want to close the door on anybody we have a process a lot of people argue the process is broken. We need to change the process, blah, 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 blah. But the reality was, prior to this entire mess, we were letting in legally over 1 million immigrants a year from around okay. the world. Legally. Okay. That, that does and everything else, including immigrants, you can come, the process, you're staying. You're now coming, becoming part of the United States. So a million a year. So that was already happening. And then there are, there's a line, and it takes mm-hmm. years to so what happens to all the people who are in line and have mm-hmm. been in line and have paid legal fees and things for representation right. to get blah, blah, blah. No, you got to follow the process. That's right. correct. And that's right. my issue. The issue is not, we don't need any immigrants, sir. We need it. No, that's not true. I am, as you said, my fa- I am the first generation born here in the United States for my family. My family came under different circumstances. We were fleeing. My grandfather was attempted to be assassinated when he was fleeing. He got in a boat, disguised himself and had a flea. The um, the idiots from Cuba. Um, it was actually the death squads that were coming to assassinate him. That's a whole other story. But he fled with my father in a boat, and they had to get out. They were got a phone call in the middle of the night said they're coming. You got to leave. That's how my family left. Yeah. And so a little bit different. It was under you know duress. But I am all for immigrants that have come over legally. We have a process. Uh, we are a country of immigrants, as everybody says. Uh, and it's true. I mean, nobody's, you know, unless you're in, 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 uh, Native American, you weren't. Yeah, but from- you wouldn't have gotten in a boat. Your your family wouldn't have gotten into a boat if you were like in Nicaragua and the same situation occurred. You would have found you had to find your way up through yep. land masses. I right. mean, the yeah, difference- it sounds simple. I got in a boat and I fled. Well, okay. no, no. The difference but- is this: the reason that we fled and that a lot of people are fleeing certain areas is for other than economic reasons. It's repression. That's what asylum is for, political persecution and things of that nature. That's what that means. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, however, and this is where we just open the doors for everybody, it's for economic reasons. If that was the case, the whole world would be here, mm-hmm. right? I mean, what's the, at what point do we draw the line? We got to have a border system. Ask, ask um, Great Britain how well that went. That's one of the reasons they left. When Brexit occurred is because one of the issues they couldn't control was their border. They couldn't control the influx of immigrants to and from throughout the EU. So these were all different concepts. And like you said, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole with you. Yeah. The brought it up. The whole reason I brought well, that it was fun. <laughs> but Let's... the whole reason I was to tell you that one of the reasons we don't have our 25th anniversary cigar, and there are a lot of cigars that are being hindered from coming out at the moment, not just with me, is because of packaging and other issues that are lack of labor force right now that we're grappling with and we're trying so, to cope 
So yeah, you yeah. do have you do have a 25th anniversary blend, I imagine. I, and you have smoked it. Yeah, I, I and it's it rock solid, ready to be going as soon as it's ready. Yes, yes. Uh, and packaging is the major issue behind it. Okay. And that's one of those issues. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, I listen. We're kind of waiting. What are you smoking tonight? Uh, I'm smoking a Prince Hall. Wow. I almost Maduro. grabbed that. I almost picked that up. Instead, I found this little bit, bad boy sitting in the back of my humidor. Primo Estate selection. Nice. Yeah. That I actually I can... like the classic better than this. It's wow. a less expensive cigar, if I'm not mistaken. It is. And it is, to me, has always been one of these magnificent, inexpensive gems in the industry. Jimmy, only you would come on the show and talk about your favorite cigar for me being my bundle mixed filler props. <laughs> no, I think it's one of the, it, it is truly, it, it's a cigar that is not like, most others like uh, of its of its character right it, it, it has its uniqueness sure. because you put in some good leaf in that you might be mixed fill but it ain't shit fill no it's all the it's all the leftovers from our premium product one of which you're right. smoking by the way that no cigar- horse has no donkey hairs in it that okay the uh, best value cigar of the year in cigar aficionado the one you're smoking mm-hmm. and that time was much less price point because it was before s chip and everything else was going on uh, the smoking is a nine to eight, uh, eight to nine dollar cigar right now. Yeah. Um, Primos classic that you're talking about is a four dollar retail. Cool. Yeah, okay. three to four, depending on the size. Yeah, it's a sub mm-hmm. five. So, oh, but yeah. thank you, thank you. No, no, I mean it's something where you know, and it's not something I would call a gar cigar either. It's a cigar that I have sat down and enjoyed. Okay. Yeah. For, for, what it, for what it is. I mean, do, do I get through the whole thing? Sometimes I think maybe near the final third, it's really kind of lost itself. Um, so, yeah, you get a little bit of what you pay for at the end. But Which pepper are you smoking in? And it comes in natural Sumatra and Maduro. Oh, I would always do the Sumatra. So it was the Primo Sum- Classic Sumatra Torpedoes. Good stick. <laughs> see I, now, now you're talking my language i i smoke them on a regular with a cup of coffee i don't know i mean if you like coffee i love it with a cup oh yeah oh yeah just got this really cool new coffee maker my wife bought me for my birthday that um because i she don't drink coffee i do so it, you know it's one of these that grinds the beans into different you know uh you know whether you want fine or coarse um, whether you want it strong or mild and you tell it how many cups and you set the timer, or you put the beans in the hopper, you wake up in the morning and the coffee pot's ready there. It's a drip thing and it comes down and infu- it does an infusion process with the water. So it goes through a whole process, not just like pouring water and dripping through. It actually has to sit there for a while with the hot boiling water inside the, the canister. Is it and Swiss? Huh? Is it an Italian machine or Swiss machine? I'm going to think it's Swiss machine. Then that would be Jura. It's, it's not a, yeah, it's not, it's not an espresso maker. Is okay. it a Jura? I don't know. It's a good okay. question. I don't know. It's in the house. All I know is I push the button and it works. That's true, probably. That's all I care Great. about. Jura as well. That's from Switzerland and uh, incredible machines. Um, I mean, really cool, really cool thing. Um, so yeah, I do love my coffees. Uh, we do go to Fresh Market, and we get. I like to get the different flavored coffees that they have there. We just went through a uh, um, uh, kind of a raspberry or something, uh, a raspberry chocolate, and now this time I got some caramel macchiato type of stuff. So we're gonna see how that is. You're getting fancy. I play around. I play. I play around. It's only. It's like twelve dollars a pound. All right. So let's go play with it. See what it is. I do enjoy well, coffee. This cigar is a Habano Maduro. If you haven't tried the Prince Hall yet, uh, give it a shot. This is a um, 8 to $14 price range, depending on your size. The Robusto is in the 8 to 9, depending on the state you're in with tobacco tax. Uh, it's all Nicaraguan except the binder. The binder is Sumatran. 
And uh, it's all Placencia tobacco. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, all of our cigars are made at the Placencia factory. Uh, I'm family with the Placencia by cousins relationship. Um, and I've been working at the Placencia factory now, blending cigars there 20, almost 25 years. I've been in business 25, almost, there for almost 25. So um, incredible. I just can't believe how my life has continued to uh, move on. But time stops for no man or no one. Uh, but it's well, you, very, you've been you, you're very busy. You you are all all over the place. I always see your your Facebook posts. You were just up in, I think, Georgia, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the um, sub, summer tour, I feel like I'm a one band, uh, one man band. Um, I'm usually home none of the summer. Um, the last stop heading back down from the north, because that's where I do in the, in the summer. I do the north. The last week, uh, which was the first week of September, I was in Georgia. I was in Atlanta yeah. area, um, but prior to that, I was in um, the week before that. I was in Nashville and Chattanooga and that area. The, before that, I was in the Chicagoland area doing events. But then before that, I was I started in Florida. Well, actually, the first week was in Montana. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the summer, Montana in the summer. Right, July. The last week of uh, July, I was in Montana. I so what's whole, it like in Montana in July? Is it nice? It was 93 degrees when I landed in Billings, and it got up to 100 degrees. Wow. And yeah, it was really warm. Sunny the entire time I was there. The summer was beautiful. Um, I, I got to tell you, I drove all over that state. I went to every major city, and I think I did every cigar lounge there was over there. And we did two all golf. Five, what are it, five lounges? Six, I mean, six, I in the whole state? Four, we're in Billings. Uh, Missoula was where I ended up at the end. But between those two spots, I was in Butte, um, Helena, um, something. Uh, so uh, let's, well, let's do it. Let's do a population ca density characteristic here. Right. So you're in Montana. All right. How many Congress, Congress calls, people? How many Congress people are all come from Montana? I don't know. Just think think about that while I look that up, because what you know, where I'm going to go with this. All right, how many how many cigar shops are in Montana? I think six. I think six. But there was a reason why there was less than there are going to be now coming up, and part of that was the uh, tobacco tax in that state was ridiculous, and uh, the gentleman that I work with up there um, just got that changed. So the tobacco tax is now like pennies, like when I say pennies, I have 30, 40 cents or something like that. Um, so now it's going to be much more feasible to open shops in certain locations like Billings, for example. I looked that one up because when I landed there, I was wondering how big that place was. I think that's like 170,000 people. One shop. And it was a cash and carry because you couldn't smoke in it. So they had one private and they had a private lounge there where you could smoke. That's where we did our event. Um, so I think things are going to change because of the whole tobacco tax thing up there as well. Um, you got some numbers for me? Yeah. So, so here's, here's the fun, right? So there are about six cigar shops in all of Montana, right? Ish, yeah. There are two Congress, there are two congressional districts in Montana. Just I two. Figured, yeah, they probably would right. people, that's it. So in Florida, how many... Cigar shops in, are each congressional district. Are there at least three in every congressional district? I'm sure there's at least <laughs> in my congressional district, which is the uh, Pinellas uh, County. Oh, there's got to be a lot. Uh, 30? Really? Maybe 20. One every couple of miles, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's like it is here. It's all over, everywhere. So but where are you at now? Uh, I am in Oldsmar, which is just north of Safety Harbor, where I reside. Safety Harbor, for those of you that don't know, is surrounded by Clearwater. It's right on the uh, bay. I'm like nine well, blocks. Um, weren't you just at a uh, Buddhist temple or something like that? Yes, I was. Last weekend, I was at the Buddhist temple in Tampa, which is on the Palm, it's, uh, Palm River. Mm -hmm. and that is a river that feeds into the Tampa Bay. Beautiful place. You know, they always are. I love going to very tranquil walk around. It's, you can understand why you just sit there and meditate for a while. Just sit there and listen to the birds. And, you know. 
in and then on Sundays they have a brunch there. So they get with like hundreds of people because wow. what they put on a big Thai fest type festival with food. And that's how they raise funds for the temple. Uh, monks live there and everything. But um, it was almost like being in Thailand, man. It was almost like being in Thailand. It really was. It was, it was uh, the food was so authentic. Everybody's speaking Thai. And I mean, it, it, it took me back for a minute to Thailand. I love Thailand. <laughs> Uh, Luciano Morales has been watching this. He goes, are you guys talking about cigars? Don't you get tired? Um, no, actually, we, 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 we talked about immigration, right? So then we just talked a little bit about cigars. Um, we all got to talk a little bit about the fact that Michael Woodward says, David, look behind you. Yeah, I know. It's awesome, ain't it? So it's like... <laughs> That's why I, it's not an accident, guys. I put that there for a minute for a reason. <laughs> now, so, I will tell you, when I came out here, the guy goes, hey, you can go smoke over there. There's no signs, nothing. You can go smoke. I came out here. There's like three signs. And I was like, well, I'm the only one here. So depends if he if there are people or families that come out, it's a different story. You know, right. I, I, I give it the benefit of the doubt. I go out there and I ignore the signs myself until somebody <laughs> says you can't smoke here. And I Unless got, you're in places like Hawaii or California, we actually give you a ticket for it. Where do we it live is, in, man? Where are we living? Unbelievable. You're, you're living in the United States of America, man. Everybody makes rules. Yeah. Changing. Uh, some things are changing in a way that are not for the better, in my opinion. But I digress. So Luciano's watching. Hey, Luch. So, so yeah, th th things are changing. And some things stay the same. Like this right here. All right. This is a shirt. Actually, this shirt, I actually found this in my drawer today. I was looking for something to wear tonight because I, I, I wanted to breach into this a little bit. This shirt's from 1989. This is 30, 34 years old, this shirt. From the Steel Wheels <laughs> Tour up in Jacksonville, Florida, where I bought this shirt. I remember it. Thank right. You. My son was just born. <laughs> But have you listened? Did, did you do any homework? Did you listen to that at all? I didn't get a chance to. I would have loved to. I wish I had nothing better than to sit around and listen to the new uh, Stones uh, album. I did not. How is it? Is it you said it's I, I, I was going to play some stuff here, but on my afternoon, early afternoon show, I threw out a little clip, just like, you know, short s snippet, really fast, like you normally can do, like with these things you get on yeah. Facebook immediately. Came in, it's like, yes. Yeah, I'm like, OK, I will not do that. I will not play it. But all I could say is it has a collection of songs. These are all original new songs, except for the last one, which is a Rolling Stone, which they 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 finished the album off with that one, you know, which is cool. But everything else is original songs. This is the first original album they put out in 18 years. Think about that. 18 years, these guys have been going around touring and other stuff, but they've never actually been coming out with new with a whole new album. This is a brand new album. This is their 26th album that they've put out in was their the city. This album, or is this, huh? was this done before he died? This has got, okay, so Charlie Watts is actually on a couple of the songs. Before he died, he was laying some tracks down to a couple of songs that Charlie's on. There's one that has um, a collaboration with Paul McCartney, which oh, wow. is just this heavy, very heavy, almost punky style sound to it. And midway through, they produce the way they produce it. They turn the they turn the fuzz up on the bass, and McCartney's bass is like something you don't normally hear coming out of them. It's not a clean bass. It's like, and I'm just listening to it going, man, that's earthy and deep and stuff. Um, they got one with Lady Gaga, which you probably heard on our radio already. They've done, it's a very special one. It's very gospel-y, back to the gospel -y sounds that they had back in the day. Um, uh, they have one with Elton John. Wow. Um, that they did, which is pretty cool. Um, but I would say that the music, it, it varies. So it's, you, you can, you can kind of listen and say, okay, this is that genre 
of the last 60 years of stones. That's this genre. That's this one. You know, they're going into their back through their history of, you know, songs and be like, okay, this, this kind of belongs on goat's head soup. And this one here would have belonged on, on tattoo you kind of thing, you know? So they've well, got hope- a whole range. But their last new album, I mean, they're getting up there, man. Well, that's My- the thing. The, the lyrics now now you get the music is spectacular i mean the, the the guitar riffs are great they got fantastic musicians and backup musicians obviously and studio musicians on this it's a well produced album but the lyrics the lyrics seem to have a common theme through a number of the songs and that common theme is i'm getting fucking old <laughs> and i'm getting angry because I see a lot of crap around me that seems to keep repeating. And I'm getting old and can do nothing much more about it. And is there anything after I get old and die kind of feeling? As you listen to the lyrics, you can almost thread some of these songs together after a while and go like, here he's talking about you know, the, the girlfriend or the relationship that kind of fell apart. And this one here is talking about how you can't put things together anymore. And this one over here is talking about, you know, heaven and heaven's earth. And, you know, and when you weave it all together, you're kind of like, is he telling you a story now? He's, you know, he lost his friend, Charlie, right? That had to be tough on the band, right? And I think they all, and, you know, Keith Richards went through a whole sobriety thing. He realized no more. Right. So everybody's changed. And this album is part of that change, I think. Well, that's and that's 80. what I think is cool about it. Yeah, they're pushing 80, aren't they? It's they are that. 80. They just turned 80. That's what I'm saying. It's not like 70s anymore. Now it's 80s. I mean, forget Jesus. 70s anymore. <laughs> when I put this shirt on, I'm, David, I'm telling you, I put this shirt on. I realize this shirt is as old as my son. I'm like, I know I'm old. Because this is still in my drawer. Yeah. I looked at my wife and I said, I told you I keep these things for a reason. I needed a prop. I didn't know I needed it 35 years later. Yeah. <laughs> and that I'm still going to be here using it. It looks good. Yeah. You know, it fits me again. That's the other thing. I threw away all my double X's and kept all my lodges and extra lodges and even a few mediums that I haven't quite fit into yet, but I don't know if I ever will. You'll get there. If you want it, you'll get there. Well, yeah, to I would I would say so. You know, when you want to do something in life, you put your mind to it and you just do it. Okay. And don't worry about the naysays, don't worry about anybody else you can't do something. You just get out there and you can make it happen. And and that's what I you know, I've done that. You know, I, I'm I'm a testament to what my willpower of doing something is. And now I'm getting ready to retire and I just don't know what I'm gonna do next. And congratulations on that. Now, it's a weird feeling. I'm sure it is. I don't know if I'll ever get that feeling because in this industry, I don't know if you ever really retire. You just like fade away and the next generation takes over. What's your dad doing? Now he retired. <laughs> he retired. Exactly. Exactly. Come on. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. You pass it on. He said, here, it's your headache. You deal with it. Hey, yeah. It's like that. He took his money and ran. <laughs> he, did, he did retire. He, uh, he has like three pensions, though. Um, so he's worked his whole life, uh-huh. um, uh, in, in a lot of different fields. Um, and, um, I, I'm glad he's enjoying a retirement because he's got my, my nephew, uh, you know, his grandson, uh, and he's spending the time with him now, a lot of time that he didn't get to spend with me, uh, or my other siblings because he was like me always working. Uh, I wonder where I got it from, but, um, that uh, I think he's making up for that now with, with my nephew. He, he bought a couple horses. He likes to ride. He, he said, uh, you know, he left Cuba. He rode a, a horse to school. And he Your said, Dad that, used to wear, r- ride a horse to school yeah. in Cuba. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so he said, uh, you know, I want to, I'm retired now. I'm, I haven't had a horse since he was, since he left Cuba. He got a horse. Have and, you been on the horse? I have not been on the horse, but my father has, has had um, quite a colorful career, uh, military, civil service, 
and he's been in a lot of hairy situations in life. So he's banged up his body a little bit. And so he's now had spinal issues, uh, spinal fusion to, to remedy that. And the only type of horse, and this, by the way, is what he had when he was in Cuba. If anybody's watching and knows anything about horses, the only horse he can ride was the same type of horse he had back then. It's called a Paso Fino. Because it does with the with the gait with the front legs real quick. Oh, they can do that, yeah. It's smooth. He can't ride a regular horse. So he had to get a Pasofino. <laughs> can't do it. Cannot do it. That's funny. So, yeah. So he uh he knowing got, your uh, father, that's even funnier. Yeah, he loves that. <laughs> but I, I guess it brings back good memories of of his childhood and uh, younger days. Oh. And uh, it's all about is uh enjoy all the decades of work and i mean watching him when i growing up and my father was always working i mean that's why i get i have the ethic that i have with my work ethic but now that i'm living it and i go holy crap i got another even if i just followed what he did i got another 20 years <laughs> jeez i wonder what shape i'm gonna be in but um you know i'm glad he's I'm, I'm glad he's enjoying it he's also very active uh, uh with the masonic uh fraternity he's a shriner as well, I'm a Shriner and a Mason. Um, but, you so, know, you, you you do that even more as you get older and as you retire because you, more time. you give you give back. If I have something to do, you volunteer. I can see myself doing that. You know, my whole thing when I did this whole climb for autism, um, you know, I got the, the thrill I got out of that more than raising money and helping the, helping was the personal connection I had with different people that would come up to me and say, Hey, you know, I hear what you're doing. I really love what you're doing. You know, let me tell you about my nephew or let me tell you about my aunt or my uncle, or my, you know, or, or the student I have in class, what there's a personal story that would always come to me and you listen to it and you begin to learn and understand more and more about what this particular infliction is about and whatever it is, whether it's epilepsy, autism, cancer, once you start connecting the people around that, it just drives you and draws you in more to want to help. Somebody just came into the pool. Give me one second. Hey guys, you're good. You're good at the pool. You're good hanging at the pool, but could you just, I'm on a, I'm on a call. That's okay. Thanks bro. You're good. <laughs> there you go. So what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to quick do a uh, the, the, the midsection uh, uh, sponsorship break. Uh, it's a four-minute break. So if you need to get something to drink or whatever, you got four minutes. And then when we come back, let's dig more into now Blanco Cigars a little more, where you're going. Um, talk, if, you can, if you want to talk about what you're doing for the anniversary cigar, if you want to talk about some of the other um, collaborations that you're involved in, that would be a good time to discuss it. All right, buddy. Thanks. All right. All right. Hold me on pause. And today's show is brought to you by Bocock Brothers Cigars, a new and active brand founded by two Honduran brothers, Bryant and Douglas Bocock. The brand zeroes in on those folks that are looking for easy-to-smoke cigars inspired by unusual circumstances. Very importantly named after their very interesting and imitable last name, Bocock. Right now, Bocock Brothers is featuring their signature edition made at the A.J. Fernandez factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. It features an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, a Nicaraguan Habano binder, and a Nicaraguan filler, available in three popular formats, a Robusto, a Toro, and a Gordo. You can check out Bocock Brothers Cigars at www.bocockbrothers.com. And today's show is brought to you by Platinum Nova Cigars. Platinum Nova is a family-owned and operated premium cigar company. Only the highest vintage tobacco and the most skilled hand workmanship go into the making of each Platinum Nova cigar. This results in a timeless blend of art and craftsmanship. The Nova brand and the family's work are a tribute and an honor to their grandfather to always remember him and his infinite passion for the finest cigars. Their love for cigars started with their grandfather, a dedicated master blender, 
and entrepreneur in the cigar industry. So the next time you're looking for that exquisite cigar experience, pick up a Platinum Nova. You can check them out at Platinum Nova Cigars, www.novacigar.com, and on their Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter channels. This episode of Taking It to the Nub is sponsored by the Box Press Cigar app, the ultimate cigar smoking experience. With Box Press, you can easily catalog cigars with your own virtual humidor. Quickly rate and record notes for any cigar using the Smoke Session feature. Receive intelligent cigar recommendations based on your personal taste profile and access exclusive discounts from top cigar brands. You can even shop your favorite cigars directly in the app, then automatically sync the order to your virtual humidor, plus so much more. Download Box Press today by typing bxpr.sd slash install into any web browser and discover the world of cigars like never before. That's bxpr.sd slash install. And today's show is brought to you by All Saints Cigars, a company founded in 2019 and headed up by industry veteran Mickey Pegg and his two friends Martin Corboy, a successful restaurateur, and Frank Leo, an Air Force Academy graduate military veteran. As Mickey explains it, they were all sitting down talking and smoking cigars, and finally they decided that they would do this thing together. It was time. Mickey said, I decided if I'm going to work hard at it, it should be something I love. Besides, a tough day with a cigar is better than a great day doing anything else. Soon after, they began the process of launching All Saints Cigars, jokingly referring to themselves as the Holy Trinity, St. Michael, St. Martin, and St. Francis. They chose for their logo the cross of St. James, the patron saint of Nicaragua, the country where their cigars would be produced. You can check out All Saints Cigars at www.allsaintscigars.com. Before you light your next cigar, be sure to check out Cigar Medics, the makers of the patent-approved Humidimeter. The Humidimeter is a tool designed to display the relative humidity inside your cigar. With this device, there's no more guessing. Simply insert the probes into the foot or cap of your cigar, and you can instantly know if your cigar is ready to be smoked. Buy now on CigarMedics.com and see site for other cigar accessories. With the humidimeter, you'll know when to hold them and know when. All right, all right. Let's get back to David. I love, I, I, I love the cigar medic stuff. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't just, you know, they, they, they advertise in me, but I use their products all the time. I mean, this thing right here, have you, have you ever got your hands on one of these bolo cutters? I did. I freaking Very love it. Yeah. You know, and what surprises me more than anything is how well it cuts a Lancero. It does cut well. I liked it. I liked it. I was very, uh, it was novel. It's definitely novel. Uh, interesting uh, design, uh, engineering with that. Uh, it's very. Right. I mean, it's innovative. I moved, and I moved locations just so I wasn't by the pool and the, and the kids oh. over there. With did I see another, somebody else floating around by you before? You did. He took off for a minute, but he might oh. come back. All right. All right. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe we can bring him on when he comes in. So 25th anniversary cigar, you, you want to divulge anything on it other than the fact that it's late? Sure. To talk about it? Yeah, I'll talk a little tice, about it. Tice some pallets? Yeah. So um, what I said was myself, self, this has got to be spectacular because 25 years doesn't come very often. And, and quite frankly, to make it 25 years in this business is a feat of itself. Um, and so after blending for all these years and having learned to work with all the various, uh, tobaccos around the world, um, that we have available at the factory down there at the Placentias, um, I wanted to go back to the roots of where the family came from and give you as close as I could <clears throat> to an old school Cuban cigar, the way they used to be made. And I'm talking the notes, the hints, the tastes, the aroma. I want you to pick that thing up. I want you to be able to say, this is, this is not a Cuban. This is 
And I mean a good Cuban. <laughs> like, to, to, total mente Omano. Total, of course. No but, tress. We're gonna go old school. Old <laughs> school. So and it's gonna be N2 bar. And uh, yes. So we're gonna go back to the roots where our family began and do something that I think that would have been considered the cat's ass back in the day when cigars were the shiznit and um, to honor the family's heritage. I'm the fifth generation in the business. Right. And so now that I've been doing this 25 years, I have a better appreciation of what it means to say a generation in business, not mine, for others. <laughs> Four other lives, entire lives were spent cultivating uh, the family's business. And I want to pay homage and honor and represent those generations as well as my own work. Uh, right. Because they planted about, the seed that you are now growing that's reaching to the sky. And it's about, so it's about the family for me. I mean, I know it's the 25th anniversary of Blanco in the U.S., but the family goes back to 1886 in the business. So it's the 25th anniversary for me, but what I wanted to do is represent all of that, that there isn't a representation of. Um, so that's what I'm striving for. So this is going to be very Cuban centric as Cuban centric as I can make it. Um, I so want do you to have it. Is it, does it exist? Yeah. Yet? I've, I've blended it. I've blended. Oh, so has your dad smoked it? No, he hasn't. He hasn't. Um, I wanted you're gonna, to, you're going to get his want, thoughts on it. Well, I want him to have it with as much age as possible. Okay. So I, I do is I make, uh, I'm, once I come up with a blend, I'll make prototypes. When I say prototypes, they're the done blend. And mm -hmm. I take them and I bring them to the rolling room uh, and we'll have them made as, as a production cigar. But then I'm going to let them sit in age. So when he smokes it, he'll have it as aged. Um, and then I want his opinion. On it. And so I, I know it's, for me, it's something special. It's something I work very hard on because it's very difficult to simulate certain tobacco flavors and tastes because Cubans have Cuban tobacco has a very specific taste and notes yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, yes, it does. And so I've been able to use different tobaccos that will provide those notes together that they don't by themselves. Um, so it, it was a, it was a, it wasn't easy. This one was a, definitely a, a challenge. Um, I've been challenged before with some of the blends I've done and, uh, rose to them. So Jimmy, you need some of that coffee out of that. Where do coffee. you put, where do you, that's just the symptom. Where do you, where, where do you put it on the spectrum of, uh, a Cuban cigars old school? So like, you know, is it a Monte Cristo like, or is it a Boulevard like, I mean, I'm not even right. going to put Cohiba into the picture because it's probably, you're thinking pre Cohiba time. Yeah. Right. So I'm a, uh, I'm, I'm more of the um, Oye de Monterey slash, mm. slash Partagas guy. Okay, kind of gritty, earthy. Yeah, but still has that, that cedar thing going on. Okay. You know? When you're cedar. using old, you're going to use old school Cuban style boxes? Uh, that's the plan. Okay, that makes sense. I like the boxes that the uh, that J.C. Newman has for their Bricktoberfest. Those are those are nice box. Ten I, don't counts. If, I don't know if I'm going to do the paper box yet, but um, you know, because Cubans also have the wooden Cohiba style, um, yeah. and I don't I don't mean cabinet. I mean the uh, Esplendido, the you know the 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 twenty five count uh, eleven or twelve or thirteen. I don't like the paper wrap stuff. It's it, it's yeah. so classic with the clasp on it and simple. It is. I just, I don't, I don't know if I want to go crazy with the artwork mm. other than something more simplistic like the Cohiba. Um, yeah, but when you open that box up and you get that magnificent artwork inside. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're still tossing around the artwork thing of how we're going to do it, but keeping in mind, everything is going to be, to their to or, or to the heritage it's all about the heritage so sure. um we're still tossing those things around I'll probably talk to my dad about that too um so yeah. that's 
I do want him involved in. I want him involved in the project um, because it's a, I don't want to say passing of the torch because he's not gone, but. No, but um, it's heritage. It's, it's understanding where it came from, where it's going. I think, if, you know, if I was to look at something like that, you'd want to see the story in the imagery yeah. of the Blanco family, all the emblematic things associated with the, the family, all the things your dad did, the things you've done, um, besides cigars. I mean, I mean, let's be real. You've been jumping out of airplanes for how long? <laughs> Decades. Decades. Right? <laughs> I mean, they just had a guy jump out of an airplane over here in Titusville, 63 years old. He died. He, he hit the ground. He was dead. You know, when, no. they do the, when they do the skydiving over here in Titusville, yeah. they have the yeah. sky. Guy's been doing it con regular, on a regular basis. It was on two weeks ago. And he came out and people saw him coming down. The parachute was open. He was kind of doing this. He was off. He veered off course. And he ended up dropping on top of a car or something in a, in, in, in a, in a development. But they believe that he, he had a heart attack and died in the air. That he was... Because it wasn't like it was coming down like, you know, the parachute didn't open it splattered on the ground, right? I guess you go, it's not a bad way to go. If you haven't jumped or haven't uh, done any skydiving, um, it's very peaceful. And it's, 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 uh, it's hard to explain. It's complete silence. You're up there where the eagles are at, man. It's just you and the wind, right? So it's almost like you're above the earth like you're 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 completely alone right. uh, and you know what i guess if if you gotta go it's a very calm i mean the pain i don't know if you went through pain or how painful it was but if you just went blacked out and that was it if you blacked out in the process but if your parachute didn't open i don't think oh, no. be, i don't think that's calm no. <laughs> what we're saying is open and if he had a medical uh episode that that caused him to uh I, i'm sure you know nobody wants to die we, you know, we could choose their way they they die but if that guy was jumping that long i bet if he had to pick his way of going it's jumping out of a plane and in and and in the sky you know a little poetic poetic uh license there wow. you know, i hope it's that way anyway you know I, I prefer to think of it that way <laughs> of course of course but you but you you you've had a lot you you've had a lot of experience in that you've you've been you know you've done a lot of military work thank you for your service your dad especially has done some crazy stuff I know the conversations oh, yeah. I had with your dad and the, oh, yeah. and and the history of what he was involved in um, so yeah I think there's a tremendous amount of uh, imagery that could be put in a piece of artwork that you'd you, you'd have to it'd be one you'd have to examine it as a buyer you start looking at it and you start seeing little things every now and then maybe the first time it didn't catch your eye another time it's like wow why is there a parachute here ah that's david well we're, we're probably probably put some uh, symbolic uh items in the artwork and we're still figuring out what those are going to be but we definitely want it to represent all of the generations like right and then go back to the great grandfather my great grandfather. So we're going to talk about at least identifying something for everybody to be on there. Um, but it's going to be an interesting uh, process. The process is going to be the funnest part. You know, um, seeing everybody enjoy the cigar, that's always fun. But creating something, you know, that's my art. And creating the art is actually the funnest part for me. So. Now, were you over in uh, Internet Tobacco this year? I didn't do Internet Tobacco. This you is the it. first year that I did not do inter tobacco in, well, obviously they didn't do COVID, but I mean, since it's been going on, the COVID doesn't count because they just canceled it. But this was my first time, I think, in at least 15 years that I did not do inter wow. And I did, not, I did not do inter tobacco this year because of the rigorous schedule that I, I have for the summer. I did it last year. I did this ridiculous schedule. I went to Germany for inter tobacco. And I was soup sandwich, man. I was so fried. I was so tired. I was like a wet noodle. Um, I said to myself, if I'm going to do the season next year, this like I do, like I did this year, like I did last year, 
uh, I'm not going to do it. And, and I took this year off. Now, things are going to change moving forward because the trade show is no longer in July. Oh, it's in March. That's right. So now I can move things around to alleviate some of the pressure on the later part of the summer. Okay. And, move, and now I'll give myself time to be able, now I won't drive myself crazy and I'll be able to go to internet back uh, again. I mean, are you, and it, are you oh, going, going to both trade shows or only one this year? No, I'm going to, I'm just going to go to PCA this year. Yeah, I'm the same way. Um, and, I, and I've been do, doing both. I was doing both. But of course, there's no sense of doing both when they're a month apart of each other. Yeah. PCA just came out with an announcement, I understand, looking at some of the great work that Coop, my friend Cigar Coop has been working on. And they're, uh, allowing, they're no longer charging media for membership. No kidding. Okay. That's a big thing, man. I mean, I guess, you know, may, maybe TPE got, you know, they, they recognized. You They're know, trying to, it's they like, gotta you know, the media guys, the, the real media guys, we come in and we're there to continue to promote and help you do this stuff in a professional way, right? Um, if you don't, if you excluded them, you would have no coverage of the show. I agree. Uh, there has to be, however, you know better than I, because this is what you do. You're the media guy. Everybody and their brother suddenly want to become a media guy. <laughs> wow. There's media, there is influences, there's TikTokers, there is. Listen, you're not going to believe this. Hold on. Sir, you got a second? No, just gentleman right here with the shirt on. You are not going to believe this, Jim. No, just the shirt you're wearing. I got a shirt. Yes, I got a shirt. That's okay. Is it been that? Are you hey! kidding me? <laughs> he's got the shirt. That's the 50th anniversary. Take a look. Oh, he's so, got and he's got it. Oh, out he's here. got a tell. He's got me one better. <laughs> uh, what shirt is that? What shirt is that? Uh, Roy's 50th. 50th anniversary. All right, you yeah. tell him this one's 35 years old. Then I'm going to know Yeah. This this shirt wow. that he's 1989. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> dude, that's you see yeah. that? People are celebrating this album. I'm telling you, you this is, if you're a Stones fan. That tattoo as well, though. What is that crazy? What? Hey, well, he got a tattoo. Probably got it when he came, tattoo you but came he, out. He <laughs> says, yeah. Right. Coming into the hotel, because I just moved to the front of the hotel from uh, where I was at. He's <laughs> coming in when you, I was like, wait a minute. It's too, too, that was crazy. That was crazy. Chances. <laughs> chances. No, I, I, I don't say that as necessarily chance. No, because again, they just released this on, on the 20th of October, which was yesterday. So yep. this is all buzz leading up to it. Everybody is happy that it's out. Anybody that's a Stones fan is listening to this. They're out there playing it, find it on YouTube. Um, like I said, I, I bought an album. It should be here in the next day or so. Um, so I can put it my vinyl. I can actually play it on my on my stereo. Um, but yeah, if you're a Stones I fan, reporter on the beat. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. I ask you questions. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't mean we were talking about the uh, the um, the media and um, you know media in this business, and then there are people who think they're media in this business, and and that it was getting a little crazy uh, there for a while. You know, everybody's entitled to jump in the game, okay? Um, I, was, I was a nobody once. Um, if it wasn't for this big six-foot-eight gringo that bounces around the state of Florida lately, um, I would still not be doing what I'm doing today. Um, he is, uh, you know, he, he was the one who really introduced me to the next level in the industry. Okay, through the shows and through what we're doing. Um, so yeah, my first show, I was like, Who are you? Why are you here? Okay, um, I don't get who are you and why are you here anymore. I, I'm usually one saying to somebody, Who are you and why are you selling cigars? What was your, <laughs> what was your first show, Jimmy? 2013. Wow, okay, yeah, That's 10, 10 years. years. We have 10 years, we're going to be celebrating 10 years at PCA this year in March. Um, we will have, at that point, we'll have well well over a million views on my site since we started. Um, we, we plan on, I plan on 
reaching out to uh, all the cigar brands and media, okay, that have been in business 10 or 11 years, 9, 10 or 11 years. I'll give them that. I don't want the eights and before that. I don't want the late. I want the ones in my demographic. I want to put us all together because it's an important statement that there are brands that came out when I started that don't exist anymore. Let me just yeah. roll, let me roll this up a second. See the guy at the top there? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Could Cornelius and Anthony. That's a phenomenal cigars. They just folded the whole business. Well, um you know why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We won't get it. We don't have to get into all the whys, but a lot of you know, there were a number of reasons why people left. Um, but there are those that are still there today, sure. right? 10 years running, still doing it. You no know, Southern draw cigars, pounding it out, right? Okay, so some, some have sustained and some haven't. So going back to the media question, um, yeah, if you, if, if you want to be media, that's fine. And yeah, your first trade show, you may not be out there as the, as a household name among cigar enthusiasts. Um, that Does that mean you shouldn't go? No. But it. I think it should be, should be looked upon to see what did they do in the next 52 weeks before the next trade show. Are they doing what they're supposed to be doing? Are they reviewing cigars? Are they, are they putting out news? Are they putting out um, other entertain are they doing what they need to do for this industry or are they just there to get the cigars and say hey thank you because then you don't get invited back okay nobody wants that okay What's the front, yeah. so somebody just showed up that that six foot eight clown that you just oh, wait whoa, whoa 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 turn, turn that camera around dude man it's like Ryan Gallimore, <laughs> what are you doing? I thought you were going home. Didn't you get home? I got home, and then I had to come to Tampa to handle some family matters. Family so matters I in Tampa? You, you like you, you going into family I don't know about? No, uh, Stephanie's, <laughs> Stephanie's grandmother uh, lives here in Tampa. Or lived here in Palm Harbor. Oh, and ninety years old, and decided to. Uh, Moved back home with her kids to to final out her days, and we came up here to help clean out her house up here in Palm Oh Park. wow, what a tough job! Which is ten minutes from me. So I hooked up with David for a smoke. Cleaning out a house is not an easy job, especially yeah. somebody old. Like I remember cleaning my mother's house out. It was what are you collecting? Why, why, why did you collect all this shit? The nice thing is she kept the house. She wasn't a clutter person. She kept the house very nice. It was just a matter of. She told everybody, look, I don't want nothing because she knows she's, she's old. And right. uh, so just clean it out and sell the house. And we just had to go pick up some furniture and, and get it prepared. Yeah. So you smoking some Blanco cigars there? Is that what you're doing? I just had one. I think it was a 25th anniversary blend I'm going to talk about. And then I'm about to smoke this Connecticut. It was. <laughs> God, he's gonna look at him. <laughs> I might have heard something. He's trying to. He's trying to start some shit. <laughs> it's, it's it's If he got his hands on a 25th anniversary, he would have glommed the second one from you, and he oh, would have came all over here and dropped one off to me and said, "Jimmy, don't tell anybody where you got this." <laughs> I have a few things. I have a few things that I have that is like, don't tell anybody where you got this from. And it's not just from Ryan. I have some other people just here, yeah, hey, but don't tell anybody where you, it's like, what am I, the priest? You know, or they call me and they say, you talk media, right? So the hardest part about being what I do is I get these phone calls sometimes from people who say, Jimmy, I got to talk to you about something. Did you hear about this? But don't, I didn't hear it from me, but I, you know, maybe you want to talk. And I'm right. like, don't, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't, can I, what am I turning my collar around again? I got to be no, the free to talk about bubbles. it. That's exactly what they're saying. Don't talk about it, which means talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. <laughs> Jimmy, good to see you. Send my love to Diane. Uh, I saw a nice 
Italian sandwich on Facebook earlier that she looked like she made you this evening. So uh, was that not an amazing sandwich? Did you see that sandwich, David? I missed it. I missed it. Oh God, God, hold on a second. Now that you brought that oh. up, now oh, that you brought go. that oh. up, I have to pop that up on the screen. Hold on one second, because my wife is an amazing cook, and I've been, I've been following my buddy Coop and all his stuff about pub subs and all his debate that they have, and I have a friend of mine locally here who makes he work he's he hangs out at the italian american club and he makes some amazing sandwiches um and i put one of his out and poop was like wow that 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 that's a sandwich now this is the one my wife made for me today hold on check this out this is my dinner yeah. oh wow. yeah 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 wow and this is this this cheese right here is um, regatta and um, um, and uh, mozzarella. As long as it's not for Munda. Yeah, there's a name for it. There's a name. There's, there's, there's an Italian name. It's it's regatta and mozzarella together. Um, it's kind of got you know it's kind of got a pasty t feel to it because it kind of drips out. But you smear that on there, and it's all the different Italian cold cuts in the bottom with arugula running through it. And oh man, and this bread, good lord! How long did it take? How long did it take it to make? How long did it take her to make it? How long did it take you to eat it? <laughs> oh, that was a that was a twenty minute sandwich. I took it slow. All right. Because you know what, the bread the bread has a heart has a tough crust. So you're biting down on it and you're gonna, and then you got to bite through some of like the prosciutto and stuff, which is, you know, kind of, you got to yank on it to get it through. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, it took a little while to dig through that, but it, it looked was, good. Looks good. It was quite filling. Yes, it was. It's all in the blending. <laughs> all in the blending. And my wife did that on her own for, thing. And normally she uses recipes and she follows them. She doesn't eat 90% of what she makes. She didn't obviously eat that. She just had hers without the meat. But um, the bread was, I told her, I said, the bread, the, the bread's really good, but it, you know, you gotta, uh, you know, you just gotta gnaw on the bread a little to get it to go right. Good deal. Well, it looks good. I might have to have one of those when I'm done here. It's making me hungry now. Yeah, you just have to come over and visit, David. You know, the door's always open for you. Thank you, brother. We're only in Tampa, so we're about two hours away. If she starts cooking now, we'll be there in a good time. <laughs> Jimmy, it was good to see you. Send love to Diane. It's, it's just a call right away, brother. I'll make it out to see you, bro. I will. I got I gotta hit that over there. He's gonna take off. What but, shops uh, are you all what shops are you in over here? I don't even know, man. These days. Name some shops because I don't think I'm in many over there. I got I don't have a rep in Florida at the moment. I'll be honest with you. What? So that's just you. Yeah. Well, the only me. shops that are local here, we got executive, you got smoke rings. I used to be in smoke rings. I don't know if we're doing, we have anything in there currently. You, not haven't any a, you haven't talked to, you haven't talked to shirtless Mike. I'm going to have to you give me oh, a reason. Yes, to come Cause he manages, he, he does a lot of management of smoke rings now. Well, I think before the end of the month, which is next week, I think I'm going to be uh, probably heading over to Jacksonville. So when I go to Jacksonville, because I got a bunch of shops over there, you know, an Island Girl up there. I used to do business with Island Girl. Interesting. Well, actually, there's two owners. There's two different owners. Island. So yes, yeah, there's I'm in one in Fleming Island, which is where my daughter is, mm -hmm. and then there's the other one, which is off of uh, what's it called? Um, well, there's four locations. But one is owned by one person, and the other three, I believe, are owned by somebody else. So yes, I'm in. I'm in Island Girl, and one of them, one of the owners, but not with the other one. But we got okay. some other that we do business with as well. So, but I'm going to stop and see everybody, and then I'll, I maybe I can stop and I'll come see you, and then I'll head back over four and head west. Yeah, because I, but, you know, I get up to see my daughter and my granddaughter and my grandson up in Jacksonville once in a while. So, let me. Uh, I'll be down. I'll be down in. Um, I'll be at Lazona Palooza in the beginning of December, November. Right. So I'll be down in Hialeah Gardens. I'll be. Then, uh, I'll be in Texas. I'll be doing okay. Texas. And then I'll be at the. And then then I'll be at the Drew Estate, the the, the bond smoker in in um, 
in 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 Claremont you know, the following weekend, and then they after that everything kind of slows down because you go into Thanksgiving week, and then we get into Christmas time. So I got like I got like nine Christmas parties <laughs> events at different shops all over the place. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I love Christmas events. I love Christmas parties. We do a pajama party. A, pa- a Christmas pajama party. You do a pajama party. Yeah, we do a Christmas pajama party. Got to have all Christmas pajamas and stuff at a those. shop. I have those. And we we do an ugly sweater uh, party. I don't have an ugly sweater. <laughs> Everybody says I need an ugly sweater. I probably <laughs> should get an ugly sweater because I I, I could rock an ugly sweater these it's days. That's fishing actually, and then and the person who wins ugliest sweater gets a prize. So yeah, yeah. I'm gonna send you an ugly sweater, Jimmy. You're going to send me an ugly sweater? All right, I need an ugly sweater. Sweater with its face on it, and then I'm going to send it over to you. <laughs> no respect. No ugly respect. sweaters have to be no. properly knitted and everything. They still have to be a good quality sweater. It can't be a shit sweater. It has to be a nice sweater, but just an ugly pattern. You know what I mean? I get you. So we do have something going on in October, though. It's called Oktoberfest. And on our website, because we do have a retail MSRP, we have Oktoberfest grab bags. They're five cigar grab bags. And they're 35, uh, shipping included, for five cigars. You can do a mild, a medium, or a full body. We curate five different cigars from all of our blends. on your website? Yep. Just do the uh, Oktoberfest grab bag. So if I go into your website here, let's go pop your website up here for everybody. So I go into Blanco Cigars website. There you go. go to where, am shop. I, where am I going? Shop. Shop. Yep. Go to the shop. Boom. There it is. See it? Oktoberfest five cigar grab bag. $39.95. You drop down that what your options are and it'll tell you mild, medium, or full body, right? So you just pick one, and yep. you're going to fill in whatever you think that is. Yep, we're going to fill in. We have a curated five cigars for each of the uh, categories, and then we okay. ship it up. So nobody knows what it is but you. Correct. That's the grab bag aspect. Correct. But, but they're all, I mean, they're obviously from all of our brands. So you're going to, if you get like the full body one, just for an example, you're going to get more Maduro. You're going to get, I think, the Blanco 9, the Liga. In Pennsylvania, broadly, if you'll get a Prince Hall in Maduro, uh, you'll get a Primo Estate in Maduro, right. which is smoking. And then That's I think a great deal, man. Five cigars for forty bucks. Yeah, it's it's like a sixty dollar value. Right. So, does that so include would, shipping? Yes, it does. Thirty nine ninety five, all in. All in. There you go, That's folks. It. Go for your Oktoberfest grab bag. What else you got in the shop? Let's see. You can buy gift cards. Yeah, that's for holidays and Father's Day. Let's talk Day. about above and beyond. How's that going these days? Because you, you, we haven't talked much about your above and beyond hero cigar. So, yep, so this completely- cigar, this cigar right here, you did for a reason. I did. Completely sold out of those right now because Veterans Day is coming up. I usually get hammered during the summer, and of course, this summer you start out with Memorial Day, and mm-hmm. I got I got a lot of sales for that. And then the Fourth of July, people hit me again. And then we had the trade show in July. They hit me again, and they were ordering for the um, the uh, Veterans Day, which is November. And I'm doing a bunch of events in Texas, so we are wiped out right now of above and beyond cigars. I got a 91 cigar and spirits magazine. It's done very well for us. So it's since a- you came out with this, um, mm-hmm. how much how much have you given back to the organizations? Good question. I'd have to check with our accountant, <laughs> but. A ton. I, I mean, just that would a- be a good number to know because I, I would put that on. You should put that on your website that you've X amount of dollars have gone back. I don't. I don't do it for that reason to give back. That's. I mean, I don't do it to brag and say hey, I'm giving back whatever. But I mean, we do give a ton back. I just did a 9/11 event for Tunnels to Towers at a shop over here in Newport Ritchie called um, Patriot Stogies, mm-hmm. uh, and we had Tunnel to Tower representatives there, and we raised a ton of money. Um, for that organization, which is a, an organization I love to work with. Um, they're building a community up here with like 109 homes uh, in the whole community. And we're going to get involved with building up there as well. 
Um, so we're doing as much as we can to get back. It's part of what we do. It's part of everybody in your own way, whatever that means. Um, yeah. Giving back, philanthropic, 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 if I could say the word. yeah, whatever. Philanthropy is <laughs> being a good citizen and taking care of your brothers, um, your brother's keeper, as it were. And that's part of masonry as well, which is why mm-hmm. the Shrine Organization, as most people are aware, our big push for that is the kids the Shriners Hospitals. So we wow. give a portion of proceeds to that as well um, through the Shrine. And again, we don't make those things necessarily public to brag about it, but it's just some of those things we do. Other other companies do the same thing. They build, you know, um, schools and stuff in the Dominican Republic. Oh, yeah. Or, or we spot, like, I mean, example, if went they charity is the tremendous yeah. charity that they have. Sponsor um, a, Spanish, a, a Catholic um, 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 orphanage uh down there i mean these are just it's things you do these are just things you do you don't you shouldn't have to talk about them but it's just things you do so it's good to know though i think it's important that people realize that this industry is a giving industry it's one of the things i mentioned when we when i was raising the money for autism how giving this industry really is. I mean, I was shocked that my my small name in the industry was able to raise the amount of money we did, okay, in the time frame, and doing it with no, I had no plan. It was a whim that I was going to do this, and people came out and, and and they donated, and and most of this money all came from the cigar industry, and I think that when people realize that, as much as you don't want to necessarily talk about it all the time it's good to know it because the more that is known that we are helping people right when it goes in front of the ridiculous court cases and stuff and they realize that all of us whether it be brand owners media consumers shops we're all giving back to our communities this is all mom and pop stuff this is all family. This is all connection and relationships. And we're all helping not just ourselves, but the greater good of humanity out there and what we can do to help out. Everybody's got something that, that they said, oh, my God, this affected me. Autism affected me. OK. And I felt I had to do something. All right. We, so- we do a ton of stuff. Like when I went to Montana, the two golf tournaments I did, one was uh, for the Shrine. Uh, and one was for the um, uh, Montana State uh, Association to help raise funds for them. Listen, I hate to cut you short, but I'm just letting no, you we, know yeah. my my that 10% battery. I just didn't want it to like lose nope. blank. Let us uh, let let us call the show here. We're beyond the hour, so an hour is what we normally run. So um, cut out on you. <laughs> no, you you you're you're a good straight man. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to give you the last word. Okay. Well, uh, with everything that's going on in the world right now, um, love each other, love your family, family, uh, pray for those that are not as lucky as we are in this country right now. Please pray for our troops. Uh, pray for peace, pray for guidance for our leadership in this country because they need it. They need all the prayers that we can give them because uh, it looks like it's going to get worse before it gets better. And uh, we've lived through these things already, uh, most of us. And uh, having a front row seat and knowing what potentially is coming uh, it could may not be very pretty. So um, the holidays are coming. Enjoy the time with your family. Uh, we'll get through this. But uh, be active. Be proactive. Um, if you see things that are not exactly right, say something. Um, be an active member in your community, whatever that means. Doesn't necessarily have to be politics, but just be active in, if it's an organization like we were talking about different organizations. Be a uh, contributing factor in a positive manner. Um, we need that right now in our country. We've always needed it, but sometimes but more than others. But right now things are, clouds are forming, you know? And for some people, it's my heart goes out to people in the Middle East right now. Absolutely. The absolute disaster. And I pray to God that we do not see some things like that happen here. 
So be vigilant, take care of yourselves. God bless you all. And as always, stay smoky with a Blanco cigar. <laughs>